As a heads up before I get started, one of the core mechanics of Utsulun Des causes some really aggressive screen flashing. I'm afraid I can't edit around this one, so if you're sensitive to that kind of thing, then go ahead and give this episode a pass. Hang on, something's off with this. Oh, that's not much better. There we go. Utsurun des Kwaso e Hawaii Iku is a style of game we haven't seen on the Famicom since Takeshi no Chosenjo. It's a game designed to be as confusing and hurtful to players as possible. It's every weird idea that they could come up with thrown into one game. Right down to having a period in the title. Zulundes was originally a comic strip, one that was so out there, influential, and innovative that the only American comparison that comes to mind for me would be Calvin and Hobbes, though the concept and humor are very different. Zulundes relied on breaking conventions, subverting expectations in a way that other comic strips wouldn't approach. For example, the first collection of strips was intentionally misprinted, joking within the book itself that the layout had been handed off to an incompetent amateur. And that kind of irreverent breaking of conventions to the point where it's actively hostile toward the person reading or playing is something that you find in the Famicom game, Utsurun Des. Though maybe not as much as I'd like. The plot of the game is that one of the comic's most popular characters, Otter, who is an actual otter, not a man in an otter suit, finds out that one of his acquaintances has been to Hawaii. Now Otter desperately wants to go to Hawaii as well, and off he goes to try to reach the tropical island. Otter's jealousy and obsession over the Hawaii trip is actually one of his major characteristics from the comic. And naturally, the game Utsulun Des features a lot of characters and references to the comic Utsulun Des. The game is a platformer where A jumps and B does a little baby attack. And Otter's a fairly stiff character for a platformer. His jump feels rather puny, and there's plenty of holes in the game that require a great deal of precision. On top of that, his little kick is terrible. It has poor reach, and you'll often get hit by enemies that just plow right through it. If you hold down the B button, Otter will charge up the attack. It'll cycle through four different abilities, which are shown at the top of the screen. First, the musical note has Otter dance. He's invulnerable while doing this, and any enemies that walk into him will die. When the fire is showing, Otter will release waves around him that will destroy anything. This is by far the most effective ability that Otter has. He's invulnerable while the waves are moving, they do significant damage, and you can jump and release the B button to shoot them in the air. After a while on the fire, it changes to a devil face for a split second. And if you release the button then, all enemies on the screen are destroyed. But if you let the charge go past the devil face, it becomes a flower. And when you hit the flower, Otter just stops and daydreams for a few seconds. And he is vulnerable during that. These charged attacks are the only way to affect certain enemies, particularly bosses. And there's one boss in particular where the devil face is the only thing that can hurt them. Otter has one last move that he can do. If you walk right up to a wall, hold up and right, and then jump, he'll cling to the wall, and then you can mash the jump button to get up it. You only have to do this in a couple of places in the game. The other move that Otter can do is pick up objects that you'll find scattered on the stages. Press down when you're by one of them, and he'll pick it up, and then you can hit B to throw them. Some objects will keep on sliding after they've landed, but they always go away if they collide with an enemy. As you make your way through the game's eight stages, you'll sometimes encounter shops, and here you can primarily purchase health recovery, or lose health if you buy the wrong thing. You get a couple of thousand yen for defeating a regular enemy, and several million yen for defeating bosses. And that includes the first phase of multi-phase bosses. One odd thing you'll note as you play is that after Otter gets hit, it takes about a second and a half for damage to register. It's just another quirk of the game. 
If you fall into the water, then Otter can sometimes swim. Just hold down the A button and point in a direction to steer him. The strongest thing about Utsurun Des is that it will toy with players. Like here, where you have to walk up the background. But I feel like after the first stage or two, that really goes away and it just winds up being a mediocre action game. They needed a lot more screwing with people. You might only have three lives, but you have unlimited continues, and the game is generous with its checkpoints. You'll pick up almost right where you left off when you continue. So I feel like leaning into the cruelty might have actually worked a bit better here. As the game turns out, it becomes more about figuring out the one weird trick to get past a section. Like on this boss, you can stand off to the side and it can almost never hurt you. Or here, you really can't approach the enemy, you just have to flash the screen and go on. Unlike a lot of the cartridges we're seeing in 1992, Utsurun Des is remembered in Japan, mainly for both being a faithful adaptation of the comic and being a cruel game that mocks players. There's even three different endings to the game, and only if the player somehow does their best can Otter get to Hawaii. I think Utsurun Des is best inflicted on people who don't know what's coming. It's easy to laugh at that way. But I don't see the gags as holding a lot of staying power, and it's not fun enough to be a game you return to. It's a game you have to play, but only play once. 